This tutorial is on how to use the mixing brush to create a background for your image. A lot of times when I want to make a background for the image, or even when I have a background that I'm not happy with in the original image, one of the best ways to make a background is to use the color that appears within the main subject mass that you want to be the most important part of the image. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the colors in the flower to create a background for the flower and that way the colors will harmonize very nicely. First step is you have to come over to your layers palette and make a blank layer. We're going to do the painting on this layer. Notice I have the flower layer locked so I can protect it. Then you're going to go over to your brushes over here. You can see you have a little brush icon. You have to hold that icon down and then you will see the other brush selections. You want to go down to the mixer brush, which is the very bottom one. Now, in this particular case, you always want to make sure that you have sample all layers checked. If it's not checked, it just will not work. So that's one of the most common errors is people forget to make sure that this box needs to be checked. Then you need to pick a brush. And you can see we've got a ton of brushes. When I'm blending the backgrounds, I use almost any fan brush that I can find. So I'm going to use one of Melissa's fan brushes right here. Click back out on the page. Now, you can change the size of the brush. When I'm blending a background, I usually want the brush fairly large. Not quite that large. And the largeness of the brush is in direct proportions to the resolution of your image. Okay, so I've got that. Now if you want your brush to work quickly, you need to make sure that the image is a fairly low resolution. You can fix it later, but this particular image is at 72 dpi at 20 inches. So I'm going to take this now and I'm just going to start dragging that color. Now this particular one has a patent. I don't like the patent, so I'm going to pick another one. That's more like what I want. And then what I'm doing is I'm just pulling the colors out. Now I'm trying to pull the color so that it's going to appear in close proximity to where it does within the main subject. See, so I'm not pulling the yellow over there, I'm pulling the yellow down this way. And I'm pulling that white and lighter area out that way, and I'm pulling the purple up into the back. Now you can be, now I'm going to take and try and get some of the green down in here. Okay. You can be very expressive with this, you just really push the color around. The more random your background looks, sometimes the more effective it will be. But you don't want to see any sign of what you started with. Now you can see, here it is. This is up here on the, back, on the layer that we made. I can turn that on and off. I haven't altered the original image at all. I did all of the work up here on a new layer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn that layer on and I'm going to reduce the opacity slightly. Now what I want to do is bring the flower back up through. Now I could just erase that here with an eraser and that's you can do that and it'll work pretty well but if I change my mind and want to bring it back you can't do that with an eraser. But if you come down here to this masking tool right here, you click and it puts a mask up here. And now if we paint on the mask with black or a shade of gray, it will begin to reveal what's underneath our mask. So I'm going to go to a smaller brush on this one because I want to have more control. And bring it down. And you can't use, you have to, sorry, you have to go to a regular brush. You can't use a masking brush on a mixing brush on a layer. So I have this out here now and I'm going to go up to the opacity and I'm going to reduce that which is going to make the brush work slower. 
which is going to give me more control. So now I'm going to just start painting over here. Whoops. Yep, you can see the gray coming up over here. And I'm starting, I'm going to reveal. And because we're using a masking layer, I don't have to be right on accurate because we can bring back. I'm going to take the opacity on that back up so we have a better idea of exactly what we're doing. There we go. Now the object is to lightly lay. I may not want that stem to even show in the image, so I'm just going to bring it back a little bit and then I'm going to come on up in here, reveal a little bit more. You see, I'm not going out over the edge, but I'm not going to worry about that because I can fix that with the mask. Now I'm going to take the opacity up to a little higher level. You can see now I'm bringing in more of the flower. Take that down to a smaller setting. I'm just trying to bring in the brightest details, work my lines. I'll bring in a little bit more of the stem there, let it fade out. Now you can see where I've messed that up. All I have to do is go back over and put it so that the white's on top and now I can come in and I can fix that. And I can decide exactly how much of it, like I might want to fade some more of this out. So by using the masking layer, it gives you the opportunity to be able to control a little bit better what you bring in and take out because you can change your mind. Now I can turn that on and off. I can also go in and reduce the opacity of it. I think I want it about like that. Now, I want it to look a little bit more painterly, so now I'm going to add a texture to it. So if I come down here with a circle, click, go down here to Pattern. Now you have to load these patterns in. I have a video on how to do that as well, and several patterns on the website if you want to use them. They're free. Um, so I'm going to click here. Now you can change the coarseness of it. That's way too coarse for this image, so we're going to take it down to about there. Now to get this to show, you have to use a blending mode. So I'm going to go on up here and I'm going to say multiply. And you can start to see the texture. Now I can go down to burn and it will show even more. Now again, I can change the opacity of that. I think color burn might be a little too strong. I'm going to go there. Bring it back up. Now, you can also, this looks a little low in contrast now. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go to brightness. And this will allow me to increase the contrast and get that to look the way I want it to look. And that's starting to get there. Okay. So here it is. We'll take it back to what it looked like with nothing. Okay, there it is with the regular background. Here's the background that we made. Okay, we can take the opacity up on that if we want, or we can take it down. Then we added a canvas texture, and then we went in and did a tonal tonality adjustment to bring it back up where we wanted it to be. So, simple, quick, easy way to add in a background and put a texture on it. Now I have another example here that I'm going to show you. I'm just going to close this one don't save. Now here's another one. I'm going to shut these all off. 
this is what we started with. We went in and used the mixing brush to uh, oops, I gotta get this. We used the mixing brush to create our background. Then we went in with a layers mask and pulled back out what we wanted. Then again we went in and added a brightness contrast adjustment to put it where we wanted it to be. And I think that might be a little too bright. You can always double click on this and you can go back in and say, well, I want to add a little bit more contrast and not quite as bright. Yeah, that looks better to me. Now if we take out the background There it is without. There it is with. Very fast, quick, easy way to make a background. Like I said, there's a, also a tutorial on how to install the uh, patents if you want to do it, and there's, and how to how to apply the patents in layers and use them. I hope you find this helpful.